Hi chaps, after popular demand, I'm going to be sharing with you my top Planet Side 2 tips. These may or may not give you that added bonus to your gameplay that you've been missing to get you back to the top of the scoreboard. Now, these are not in any particular order of helpfulness and probably won't help everyone, but it might help someone, so that's a good place to start. Number 1. When you find a deployed enemy Sundra or friendly NC Sundra, mark the position on your map with a waypoint. This will enable you to find it easier if you get lost. Make sure you switch to engineer and equip tank mines. Get yourself onto a flash and race over to the Sunday. Drop three tank mines and a sticky grenade and get the hell out of there. Enjoy the fireworks. Number two, you can use the towers to jump up onto various amp stations or walls if you aren't light assault. This will save you from walking around the base of the entrance and possibly even allow you to get one up on the enemy. Number three, if you are building the base and you are finding that randoms are stealing all your resources and not putting them back, you can easily set your silo to squad or lock to yourself by holding Q and opening the options inside this to lock it. Please remember once you have built all you can to unlock it again depending on the situation. Number 4. If you are rolling in a tank, always try to equip the anti-armor rifle as the engineer. It could make a huge difference when trying to get the kill after bailing from a tank or not. Most fights tend to be even and two shots from both you and your gunner shooting at the enemy's MBT might be the difference between you bagging those kills or not. Number 5. Most people aren't aware but when you are driving a harasser you can use the back seat to top up repairs while driving. It may give you those extra needed repairs that may be the difference between winning and losing. Just be cautious though as you can be sniped at the back also. Number 6. If you are trying to get into flying or have been flying for some time, you may not know about the analog throttle option in the game settings. If you set the analog throttle on, this will help you get into hover mode much quicker. From here, you can then do the reverse maneuver and try and kill those enemy ESFs. I have mine set to the E key and exit aircraft bound to the free key. Number 7. Try and upgrade to max level stealth on all your vehicles. This is such a key upgrade that you should buy with certs when you can. 9 times out of 10, a flank is always going to benefit you more than the enemy. With stealth equipped, the enemy won't be able to see you on the minimap unless you are really close. This will give you the advantage and the damage multiplier when shooting them from behind. Number 8. When gunning a heavy or light tank, you can do what we like to call the repair and reverse. This is achieved when under heavy fire by using the reverse key and bailing and repairing. The tank will continue to reverse for a short duration and you can get some extra repairs in while doing so. This may save your life on more occasions than you realise. Number 9. When you get out of your vehicle, try and always make sure to reload your weapons so you're ready to get back into the fight. It's such a simple little trick, but not many people do it. You never know when the enemy might turn up in a flash or harasser ready to surprise you. If you're fully reloaded, you will be able to jump back in and give them a taste of their own medicine. Number 10. If you're struggling to get those kills or vital headshots, Try slowing down your aim with the mouse with either sensitivity options in game or in your mouse software. This will take some time to get used to and you'll probably hate dragging your mouse from one side of the mouse mat to the other, but this may just improve your aim enough to start taking the other hand and getting back onto the scoreboard. Number 11. If you're wondering why some engineers can remove tank mines and others can't, they aren't role playing Jeremy Renner in the Hurt Locker, they simply just don't have the max level engineer tool. This may take a whopping 740 certs to unlock but it will enable you to remove tank mines. Also, it will increase your repair speed by 33% and increase the overheat threshold to 13.5 seconds, which is a much needed upgrade. Number 12. If you see a cluster of enemies on the floor and the fight seems to be going on forever, mark your trusty little ordnance survey map with the location and either try putting a light assault and flank them and throw some C4 at them or redeploy to a local base and spawn an ESF. You can then bombard them with either rocket pods and the main cannon and bail at the last minute before you die and get some more kills with C4 or small arms fire, provided you are not anything other than light assault, otherwise this will be a short flight. Number 30. When fighting a tank, always try and use cover to your advantage and repair when you have a few seconds to spare. The train is always able to be used to your advantage to either quickly get out and repair the tank for those extra hit points and keep you alive and then quickly get back in and show the enemy who's boss. Number 14. 
If you're a new player, you probably don't have C4 unlocked, then look at unlocking the medkits. You can unlock the first two tiers for 150 certs, and this will unlock it for all use on the other classes in the faction, other than the max. You can then spam the mag kit when you are on low health, and that will keep you alive for a few more kills. Try combining this with Nano Weave Armor or Advanced Shield Capacitor. Number 15. If you are finding that you are dying a lot when you bow from ASF or Light Assault, try switching to Jump Jets to Drifter Jets. These appear to have never ended supply of forward momentum, and if you practice it a lot, you can either switch to C4 and try and throw it at the enemy SF that just killed you. If that is an option, you can always use your drifters to surprise some poor tank on the horizon. Number 16. Are Biolabs giving you a hard time? Try playing a light assault and give your forces a new angle to fight from. People mostly get tunnel vision when they are in the thick of battle, so if you get a nice vantage point, this can get you to rack up the kills up and bring some enjoyment for what can sometimes be a mindlessly boring fight. Number 17. When playing as a max, you might find yourself to be that unlucky player that always dies easily from C4. Try swapping your armour out to the flak armour. Each level you unlock gives you 10% more resistance to explosive damage. The kinetic armour is also a really good choice. I find it works best in squad play. Each level will only increase your small arms resistance by 1.5% of the 20% damage of the small arms that you get overall, so bear that in mind. However, always swap your armour according to the fight. If you feel that you have enough friendly engineers behind you, then maybe kinetic armour would be best played, giving the high resistance to small arms fire and taking the strain off the friendly engineers. 18. If you play solo infiltrator a lot of the time, try switching to motion spotters and start playing as a team. These are more helpful for squad based play, just bear in mind that they're always visible on the map, so they will give your position away easily, but they last much longer than recon darts and you won't need an engineer to resupply you every two seconds with new recon darts. Number 19. If you don't have a fully certed blockade Sunday and haven't unlocked deploy shield or max stealth, then the next best thing for you is to look at the repair and ammo Sundays. Since the most recent patches, they have buffed the XP given for giving ammo and repair from both infantry and Sundays, and it's just an all round helpful job for your faction. If you can get these to max level, the XP will come flying in and you will unlock things in no time. Number 20. If you want to get into squad leading, try searching into the spawn beacon and the squad spawn option for the Valkyrie. This will enable your squad to quickly jump into action when you need them to, and it's much quicker than a galaxy to get around. Just remember that when you are not in friendly territory, they can't spawn on you and this will set you at a disadvantage if you need reinforcements before they have redeployed. If you feel that I've missed any tips that you think should have been in this episode, then please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks very much chaps, see you next time. Now I don't normally do tutorials or guides or any videos like that, I just normally do my montages and, and that's about as far as it goes. But if you found this uh, was interesting and you enjoyed it and it was helpful and um, you think I should do more of these then please let me know in the comments below and I can look into doing it.